Dr. Nariyuma believes in a concept of take a cent all over. In other words, invest money where you can see it, where you can supervise. Don't put money in the village, in a farm in the village where you go once a year, you lose. So uh, using that concept, Dr. Nariyuma stays just in the backyard of her farm. This is her house. You can see that is where she stays with her family. And she also has a very powerful school. It's called MST Junior Academy. You can see it. It has a primary one up to P7. And they teach uh, kids the normal curriculum in Uganda. But they emphasize farming and financial literacy. So I am going to be taking you through the farm. Of course, you will not see everything but i'll make sure i give you highlights that will inspire you to know that farming can make money dr narima is using just one acre one acre but she's producing over 700 piglets uh, a year she also sells mature pigs for uh, for pork she also has fish she has uh, local chicken matoke different vegetables cattle so you are going to be having quite an experience so right now i am now moving to the farm you're going to go with me yeah as i walk to dr narima's farm i want to be telling you that what dr narima does here is what we call integrated farming this is where you do various farming projects that feed into each other now today in uganda that has proved to be more profitable than large-scale commercial farming because there are few people that can have billions and billions to invest in large-scale commercial farming where you find someone is growing let's say hundreds and hundreds of acres of one crop that one can be done by just a few who have a lot of capital can employ uh, very serious managers and uh, give them targets but many ordinary Ugandans what they can afford is integrated farming like what Dr. Narima does at her farm. Now with integrated farming you have to make sure that projects feed into each other. They are not stand-alone projects. For example at this farm uh, maize is grown. This maize is fed to cattle and the cows produce milk. So all the maize uh, grown here is for cattle not for people and of course those that have been following our uh, our teachings, they know that it is more profitable to, to grow maize and feed animals than to give it to human beings. Yeah, <laughs> I wish I had time to explain the mathematics, but now you know it. So when this maize is given to cattle, the cattle produce milk. The milk is fed to piglets. And of course, many people ask, how can you give milk to piglets when they are human beings? Well, the mathematics is here. The profitability of piggery depends upon how often pigs produce. So pigs are like human beings. Uh, there is family planning. Unless you remove the piglets from a pig, it will not conceive. So if they continue suckling, it will not conceive two months, three months. But here at Dr. Narima's farm, piglets suckle only for 28 days. Those are four weeks. And then they are removed. When they are removed, the pig is fed so well and it is put near a male so that in seven days it goes on heat and conceives. So uh, the piglets which remain, having suckled only for uh, one month, 28 days, those that do not have enough weight, they are given milk. Again, there is a mathematics there. You can say, how can you give milk to pigs? But it makes sense to give milk to a piglet and it grows and you sell it at 150,000, 200,000. For Dr. Narima, it is three, uh, it is $100, which is about 360,000 shillings. So that makes more sense than selling this milk at uh, about 1,000 shillings a liter. So the, the, the milk is fed to the pigs and then the pigs produce urine and dung. This urine and dung is what fertilizes the crops. Uh, if you have been buying fertilizers, you notice that there is a component of urea and that comes from urine, whether it is for a human being or an animal. It is the best fertilizer. Pigs also produce dung. Now the dung here is used to produce maggots. You're going to be seeing that. Uh, that is the, the science we learned in primary three, primary four about the life cycle 
of a housefly, how eggs, houseflies lay eggs, eggs turn into uh, larva, and larva are actually maggots, which feed uh, fish and chicken. In fact, we have done an experiment here where the, the, the fish and the chicken that have been fed on maggots, they grow faster and they put on more weight than those that are fed on commercial, on commercial feeds. So, let's enter the farm. Now, here at the farm, you can see biosecurity area. Stop. Keep out. This is very important. If you are a farmer, wherever you are around the world, do not allow people to just enter your farm or pass through your farm. Some people have gardens where people walk through. No, no, that is wrong. Because people carry pests and diseases, you can lose all your animals in a very, very, very short time. So here at this gate, what we do is to disinfect our feet. Right now, I'm stepping uh, in this disinfectant, as you see such that the germs that are on my feet can die. As you're seeing, this is the area for fish. Uh, this is what we call smart fish farming, where the fish are grown in a compound, not in a swamp. We grew up knowing that fish can only grow in a, a, a water body where there is a lake or a swamp or a river, but not today. Technology has improved. This is Dr. Narima's farm. Once again, I'm Robert Bake, Mr. Inspiration, uh, coming all the way from World of Inspiration. And today we have people that have come to visit the farm. And I want to give you snapshots into what they are learning. Ah, I can't bypass this machine. This is a machine that grows animal feeds in only six days. Six days. This is what we call hydroponic fodder. Yes. So you need just this machine to feed about 10 cows. So we are going away from traditional farming where we are told that you need 10 acres to feed 10 cows. You just need this machine, which is the size of a big lorry. You put in seeds and they grow in six days. What you see down, the tray down, is actually six days and it is ready for eating actually here you don't need soil you grow food with only water light and the right temperature you don't need soil can you imagine <laughs> did you know that you can grow food without soil hmm okay we are at dr narima's farm smart farming yes we shouldn't carry smartphones without knowing how to do smart farming Ah, let me first take you to where they are learning and you get something and then we'll continue. So, this is Salong Washington Mugera, Dr. Narima's husband. He's the one that is now training. Let me take you and you hear what he's saying. It has been diluted by the urine. Yeah. I mean by the water they're using to wash. You get it? Uh, yes, I was explaining that question. Sopas does not have issues. Because even when you're doing organic pesticides, we always add soap. So soap doesn't have issue. Secondly, the soap you use is very, very, very little. You get it? And then secondly, you don't dump it at the crop, on the crop, on the same, on, on the same one crop. No. You keep on changing. Let's say today you've done one line. The next day you do a second line. Third day you do another line. So by the time you come back, already this one has already been utilized. You get it. So you don't have to wait. Get it, use it instantly. Yeah. So yes? You are saying that you, you let this urine age for about one month? No, 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 no. Instantly. Instantly. Can be taken yes. instantly. Today, you, you've got the urine today. For example, this one. We are going to use it today. Use it. And pour there. Yes, to the and plants. Huh? On the plants? Or on the plants. No, no, on the plant. You on the plant. plant. The plant. The plant. Okay. No, no, you look. This, I, I'd like to explain again. One, you don't apply it there every day. Yes. You can, you, well, by the time you reach there, already you have uh, almost 14 days. Mm. You get it? Secondly, the water that you are using for washing is helping you dilute it. Secondly, pig urine is not as concentrated as yours, human urine, because the pigs taking a lot of water. Human pigs don't like to take water. So their urine is really highly concentrated. 
So this one, not so concentrated. Secondly, we add water by washing, then you can easily use it. Then, especially when it is shining, the, the sun tends to evaporate some of the excess nitrogen. Yes. Uh -huh. So we are moving with the waste now. The urine has been every day. You put in a wood barrel and fill it. You move with it. Let's go. This is the piggery section. Unfortunately, we are not going to enter because of biosecurity. These days, there is a lot of swine fever and the pigs die easily of swine fever. In fact, they do not have many sicknesses, but swine fever is one of the dangerous ones. So this is the piggery unit. This is where uh, Dr. Nariima produces over 700 piglets in a year. It has sections uh, from section A up to section E. Uh, if you have noticed, there is one house that is complete. Now the one that is complete, this one, is for the young ones and their mothers. It is the maternity. Hello? It's oh, I don't want you to miss this. This is the section where uh, maggots are created for local chicken and also for fish. Of the chicken. I mean, about that to see how they are, they are formed, they are structured. Like this. Why? To scratch. Looking for what? Food. Which food? Insects. Which insects? Two, uh, two types of insects. The, 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 the maggot and the earthworm. Now, the maggot has been formed. You have the maggots. And remember, chicken who, who was made not eat much. That's the that's the proper food for chicken because of their feet. So they scratch and get the what? The maggots. You get it? Yes. Now those ones are fed on maggots. So you get your dung, you fed it, you bring it. It can be any dung. Mm -hmm. Pig dung, chicken dung. Mm -hmm. After drying. Uh -uh. Fresh. Can mm. they be mixed? Yeah, you can mix. More? You can mix. Cow dung. You bring it, scoop and put in a dish. Mm -hmm. After putting the dish, you you, are, you already have the eggs. Because that's the fly you're talking about. Mm. You keep it in a cage. Yes. So it lays the eggs. It, you bring the eggs. You put them in here. Mm -hmm. And then we stock here. We stock here. We have different sizes. You see these ones are young, they're still growing. Wow, these are more than outside. So the sunshine affects the number of maggots, maybe? No. But these are many. It's because there are, of course, there are so many factors you cater for. Then after 12 days, on day 12, these will have grown into this. So at day 12, you have this. And you have ready food for your chicken, for your fish <laughs> as well. So how do you remove them from the... It thing? depends on what type of chicken you're raising. If I'm raising the local or the croider, I don't have to do, to stress myself, sorting out. I just scoop everything, mm -hmm. I give the chicken, they sort themselves out. Mm -hmm. Yes. And fish? Fish, you have to remove them, wash them. Because mm -hmm. if you don't wash, they may contaminate the water. No, she's, now she's breeding. She's something out. Interesting unit. Now here, this is where dung is brought. You can see some earthworms. Now earthworms eat manure. This is actually dung. So it decomposes it into humus, which is soil. Uh, as you can see this side, this is becoming soil. Now it is soil. This is humus. This is what is eaten by the crops crops do not eat manure they actually eat humus so here uh, some of these worms are eaten by the local chicken they are fed to the local chicken the remaining ones they excrete a liquid called vermi liquid which is now collected this other side 
Uh -huh, you can see Vermi liquid is a fertilizer, a very good fertilizer and also a pesticide. So this is where it is collected from. You can see uh, much of it here. Yes, so this is how soil is made. In this farm, at Dr. Narima's farm, the soil is actually marum, but because she is able to create soil herself, that is why she's she's able to grow crops that are very, very, very healthy. Do potted plants like these ones. You could be having the veranda and the compound as the only space where you want to do farming, you want to grow onions. Yes, this is very good soil for you. Like you can see here, there are spring onions. Yes, these are spring onions. Yes, strawberries. These are grown in that kind of soil. Ah, I think this has been enough for this tour. Please watch the videos. I will be posting them on my Facebook page, Mr. Inspiration, and also on my YouTube channel, which is also Mr. Inspiration. Thank you.